Okay, so let's take a look at creating our first simple program in Eclipse. Since Eclipse is project-based, all the programs that we construct have to be associated with a project. So the first thing we need to do is actually create a C++ project. And we could do that by going to File, New, and then coming over here to C++ Project, left-clicking on it, and now we get a little dialog box here. And it wants us to specify the project names. The project name here is just going to be maybe first project, since this is our first project. Under project type, select empty project. And under tool chains, make sure min GW GCC is selected. Okay. Once you've done that, you can click on finish. And now over here under Project Explorer, we should see first project. If you don't see Project Explorer here, you should be able to go under Window, Show View, and then select Project Explorer. But it should be showing up by default. So over here we do have our project. And basically this first project is a folder on our system stored in our, our workspace, wherever you designated your workspace to be. So what we can do now is actually add in a C++ source file to this project. So let's go ahead and right click on first project. Go to New, and then we can select Source File. Okay, so this is where we're actually going to name our source file. In our case, since we named the project first project, let's name the source file uh, first program. And we need to provide an extension here of .cpp. So CPP is just the default naming convention for C++ source files. For template, if you have it selected to default C++ source template, uh, change that to be None and then click Finish. Okay, so now we're ready to start typing in our first program. So you should see a tab here that has the name of your source file. If you named it something else other than firstprogram.cpp, then you'll see that name appear there. So right below that, let's just left click and start typing our first line of code. So the first line of code is gonna be pound, include, space, open angle bracket, and Eclipse should automatically insert a close angle bracket there for you. So in between the open angle bracket and the close angle bracket, let's type IO stream. So what does this line of code actually mean? Well, the pound include is what we call an include directive. And it's saying to make some set of facilities provided in some other code available to us in this program. In this case, we're saying include IO stream. And IO stream is part of the C++ standard library. And what we want to use from the IO stream is the facility that allows us to get input from the keyboard and to output text to the monitor. Okay, so go ahead and hit enter, and we'll type in our le next line of code. So the next line of code is going to look like this. Using space, namespace, space, std, semicolon. I don't want to say too much about this particular line of code at this time, other than it's going to save us a few keystrokes. But we'll revisit the concept of namespaces later when we discuss such concepts as functions, classes, and scope. Okay, so we're ready to write our next few lines of code now. Go ahead and hit the Enter key twice. And we're going to write several lines of code and then come back and explain these lines of code. So type in int space main open parentheses and Eclipse should automatically insert a close parentheses for you. Uh, come on the other side of that close parentheses, hit enter again, and now you want to enter in a brace. Okay, so on your keyboard that will probably be the shift key and the uh, open square bracket. So that will get you to the open brace. Uh, hit enter again. And you'll notice that Eclipse automatically inserts a close brace for you. And it's also moved our insertion space over some. And this is perfectly fine. In general, when we have an open brace and a closed brace, we want to move all the text within that open brace and closed brace over by some level of indentation. I think here we're doing four spaces. So now we're going to type in C out, space, and then we're going to use the open angle bracket twice, space, and then we're going to use double quotes. So you'll notice that Eclipse automatically inserts the closed double quotes for us. And then we'll type C++ is fun. Exclamation point. And then we want to have a slash in. 
And then we're going to come on the other side of the close parentheses, or excuse me, the close quotation mark, uh, double quotes, and hit the semicolon, and then hit enter. And then we want to type in return space zero semicolon. Okay, so let's talk about this code that we've written. This code here is what we call the main function. So it starts here and it ends here. Uh, the very first line that we have here is what's called the main function's header. And then the rest of it is what's called the body of the main function. In general, when we talk about a function, it's just some sort of name set of instructions related to performing some particular task. And later on, we'll look at writing additional functions besides the main function. So every single C++ program requires a main function because this is where program execution actually starts. Whenever we run our particular program, it's going to start executing in the main function. So let's look at the actual code within the body. So the body starts here at the open brace and stops here at the close brace. And all the code that's within that is part of the body of that function. So here our first line of code has the C out. And C out stands for character output stream, and it's providing us with the ability to display characters to the screen. So whenever we run this particular program, hopefully we'll get something displayed on the screen. The next part here, we have these two open angle brackets. And this is what's called the output or the insertion operator. And it takes whatever we have here on the right-hand side and redirects it to what we have on the left-hand side. So in this particular case, it's sending the text C++ is fun to C out, which in turn displays the text on the screen. Now toward the end of this, you'll see this slash in, and that's a little bit peculiar or unusual. And really what's going on here is we're denoting a new line character. So we have a, a special character here, slash in, and that denotes a new line character. So whenever we, whenever we print this out on the screen, it's going to have C++ is fun, and then a new line character. So it turns out that all C++ statements should be terminated by a semicolon. So this is in fact a statement that we have and at the end you'll see that we do in fact have a semicolon. Alright, so let's look at the next line, next and last line of code here in the main function. It says return zero semicolon. So it looks like a statement once again. In this case, this function main is returning the value of zero. And it turns out that with all functions, we can have a return type specified. Here, if we look back at the main function header, the very first thing we have here is specifying the return type. So the return type specified here was an integer type. So this means that this function, when all is said and done, has to return a value that's of integer type. And that's exactly what we're doing here. We're returning the value of zero. And this zero here just simply indicates that our program terminated or ran successfully. Uh, you may be wondering, where is this being returned to? Well, it's returning to whoever called main, whoever invoked main. Later on, we'll be invoking other or calling other functions from main or from other functions. So whenever we talk about something being returned, it's being returned to whoever invoked or called that particular function. Okay, so now that we've discussed the code in our first program, we're about ready to run it, but there's a couple of more things that we need to do. One thing that we need to do is actually save this particular program file. You'll notice here that next to the first program.cpp name that we have a little asterisk or star here. This is indicating that we have not actually saved this particular file back since we last modified it. So what we'll do now is actually save it. So you can click on or hold down the control key and hit S. That's one way to do a save. Or you can come over here on the toolbar and click on the little diskette. And that's what I'm going to do is just click on the little diskette icon. And now you'll see that the little asterisk or star has been removed, indicating that this is up to date. We have the latest and greatest. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is actually build this particular project. And the way that we're going to do that is to use this little button here, which is our build tool button or our build button. And the build process really takes place in two stages. The first stage is going to be a compilation process in which it's going to compile all of the C++ code. What does that mean? That means it's going to transform this particular code here into 
machine code. That means code that this particular computer system can understand and run. The next thing that is going to take place in the build process is a linking phase. And what's going to transpire there is it's going to link the machine code that was generated from our first program along with other machine code from some of the library files that we made use of from I.O. Stream. And at that point in time, it's going to generate an executable file. And that executable file is the whole kit and caboodle that will actually run this particular program. Go ahead and click on the build, build uh, button here. And we'll build our project. You'll notice here on the console that we have some things going on as well. Uh, you can see what compiler was actually invoked. There were some options associated with this particular compiler. And you can also see that we generated a first project.exe. So this is an actual executable file. And if we come over here to Project Explorer, you can also see that we have uh, an executable file. So go ahead and left click on the little button next to first project. It may be a triangle, it may be a little plus symbol. In my case, it's a little triangle, and that should expand out the listing. And then it's uh, also the same case here with the binary, so we want to expand out the listing there. So here you can see that we have firstproject.exe, and you can also see this x86. This is indicating the architecture that this particular executable will actually run on. So in this case, it's saying that it'll run on x86. So those are your Intel processors and your, your AMD processors. All right, so let's try to actually run this program and see what transpires. So I'm going to go up here again to the toolbar and click on the Run button. So again, it's a little green button with the, like, play, the white Play button or the white Triangle button. So go ahead and left-click on it, and we'll see what happens. Okay, down here, if we look at our console, you'll see that we did, in fact, get C++ is fun. So it looked like our program did exactly what we expected it to do, to print out to the console or to the screen, to the monitor, C++ is fun.